This is based solely on my personal observation over the decades. You know, I'm almost 70 years old. I've been watching these things, and uh, I come to this conclusion. Tell me whether or not you agree with me. I'd be curious to know, but I notice one of the key differences between people with autism and those who are neurotypical seems to be a matter of superficiality. That is to say that neurotypical people seem to be very superficial, whereas people with Asperger's syndrome, autism, tend to be uh, not shallow, but kind of deep. You know, we, we see value in things that other people just dismiss. For example, friendship. Talk about that in just a moment. But uh, yeah, we are different. But that could be a very positive thing because we have a difference that is, uh, well, it's deep. It's complex. Let's take a look at some of these things. And as, as I was pondering this and thinking about it, I came up with 10 ways. The people with autism seem to be a little more deeper, less superficial than neurotypical people. Now, these things may or may not apply to you. You can let us all know in the comments section. And by the way, it really helps the algorithm, YouTube's algorithm, when people comment and like and uh, share our videos. That makes a huge difference. But uh, yeah, I would still like to know what you think. And But it, when, when you do make comments and, uh, you know, give us a thumbs up, like button, or whatever, that does help our channel grow. Okay, number one is this. Uh, we tend to express emotions differently. A lot of people think that uh, people with autism are just uh, zombies. We don't have emotions. We're just kind of uh, like robots. You know, you've probably been told that, maybe not of those words, but uh, people say, you know, we notice that you have this blank expression all the time, or they wonder, man, are you on some kind of a drug? You know, they're wondering what's going on here, but it's a blank expression. It's a poker face. That doesn't mean that we have no emotions. It just means we don't necessarily express them the way that others. That means that we are thinking, not reacting that it is internalized, not externalized, and we keep it deep inside. And that's what we're talking about, that we tend to be emotionally deep. We tend to be thinking deep. All of those things seem to be inside where others, neurotypical people, they just let it loose. It's gone, and they, they kind of lose it. And I'm not sure I like that. Not sure I want to be neurotypical if that's what that is. Number two is we tend to be um, sensitive. We actually care about... Uh, things that other people don't care about. We have a deeper world view. I noticed that a lot of people with Asperger's syndrome, with autism, like uh, pets. For example, they like animals. They care about um, nature. Now, personally, I'm not into pets. Uh, I had goldfish once and, uh, you know, whatever. They swim around. You watch them. But most people that I know who have Asperger's syndrome or autism, they're quite fond of their cats or their dogs or their little critters, whatever kind they have. And sometimes they can't get enough of them, which can be a problem. But that is something that is just indicative of what is going on inside the minds of people who are autistic. And that is they have this connection. They have a connection with nature. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I like to get out in the woods. I mean, I like to get away from the city, away from people, away from the hustle and bustle. I like to take walks in the country. Fortunately, we live near, um, you know, farmland where I can go out late at night, uh, one or two in the morning, full moon, nice breeze, kind of warm. And uh, man, I mean, what what is better than that in life? You say, some people would say, well, what I like to do is hang out with my friends. Okay, I'm perfectly okay with that, but that doesn't quite trump those moments of solitude where your mind is just free to think and you hear the, uh, uh, I was going to say you hear the birds chirping, but late at night they don't chirp that much. But you do hear traffic running up and down the interstate. I guess that counts for something. But you have those moments of solitude. You look up at the stars, you absorb, you know, moon at late night, not so many stars out. But you sit there and kind of stare at the moon and you just wonder what it would be like and how long it's been there. And all these things just uh, overwhelm our senses. Neurotypical people, they don't seem to do that. I mean, maybe they have their moments, but by and large, no. Maybe that's why people who are astronomers tend to also be Aspies. Is that conceivably possible? I think so. Not all of them are Aspies, by the way. So number three is this. We find significance in almost 
uh, just about anything and everything. We wonder how things work, how it got there. Now, I don't know about you, but uh, I find bugs fascinating. I'm not into bugs. There's probably a term for that, uh, insectology or something I can. I don't know. But if I see a little bug walking across the floor or crawling up the side of the wall, most people just smack the thing and get it out of there. Sometimes I do that. But uh, I, I like to watch them and see what they're up to. You know, sometimes I was watching the other day a wasp climbing up the outside wall of my house. And I just had to stand there, didn't have to, but I just wanted to stand there and watch it try to find its way to the nest. Why was it walking? Well, it appeared that the wasp was carrying something that was kind of big for it, you know, kind of like ants do. And uh, it couldn't fly. Apparently, it was too heavy to fly with it, so it had to walk. So it had to walk home. And it was trying to figure out how to get there. And why, why does that fascinate me? I mean, most people, what, you're watching a wasp? Are you crazy out of, my, out of your mind? Well, I think that's because we find significance in almost everything. We understand that everything plays a role in our lives, and we don't take things for granted. Very few things. Do we say, eh, who cares? Yeah, we tend to care about everything. Now, if I'm wrong on that, please let me know, because... This is based wholly on my experience. I don't know any research out there, maybe someone has, that has determined that Aspies find significance in almost everything. This is based entirely on life's laboratory as I've experienced it. Number four is we are inspired by our environment, not so much by people. That takes us back to the country road late at night walking through the cornfields or cornfields on the side of the road. And that, to me, is very inspirational. To me, getting out in the woods, that inspires me. To me, getting out away from people, that, to me, is very inspiring. I think I could live my life in a cabin in the woods as long as I had food. You know, and I'd have to figure out how to get that done. But outside of that, I could do without my cell phone. Some people can't live without their cell phone. I could do without a lot of social interaction. Maybe some, particularly if I get sick, got to have somebody. I could live without all the hustle bustle. I could even live without my cars. I mean, to me, I'd be perfectly happy in that environment because to me, that is inspiring. Other people, neurotypical people, they got to have other people around them all the time. Different levels of extremity with this. But yeah, I know people that... Um, it's almost like an addiction. They got to be in a crowd. They got to be socially interacting, not with one or two, but with a whole bunch of people at the same time. Social climbing to them is uh, really, really, really important. They got to be in style. Doesn't matter what it costs. They got to have the right handbag. They got to have the right hairdo. They got to have the right car. And then a year later, they got to renew all of it because the style is different. And hey, they got to be accepted. And to be accepted, you got to be in style. Uh, Style to me doesn't mean a whole lot, maybe a little bit, but uh, I don't know about you. But uh, I'm perfectly happy spending my life wearing sweatpants. You know, if that's not in style, cool. When it comes back in style, consider me to be ahead of my times. When it goes out of style, consider me to be behind the times. But uh, for me, none of that matters, and I think that's true of a lot of people with Asperger's syndrome. Oh, we don't mind being stylish or keeping up with the uh, trends or whatever. It's just, it's just not a preeminent thing in our lives. So we are inspired, at least by my observation, by our environment, which, by the way, never goes out of style. Nature never goes out of style. So we're always in style. They just, uh, neurotypical people just don't seem to notice. Number five is uh, we tend to be curious, have a lot of questions, you know. So we're watching nature. We talked about that before. And if this doesn't apply to you, you know, you can let us know in the comment section. But we're looking at nature. We're um, a part of nature. We understand that. And so we have questions. How does this thing work? And again, I think that's one of the reasons why people who are inventors tend to be Aspies. They tend to have uh, autism because we wonder, you know, we're curious. How does that work? How can I make it work? How can I make it work better? All of those questions just seem to flood our minds. Number six, we've kind of touched on this already, but uh, you know, we're really not into materialism. We're kind of, uh, most SPs I know are like minimalist. Uh, and I don't think it's because we have a hard time finding work or keeping jobs that we don't have stuff. I think a lot of it has to do with that we don't value stuff as much as neurotypical people do because stuff represents status and status is not something that we are akin to 
or accustomed to, I should say. So we grew up being taught by those around us that we have no social status. So we learned, maybe it's just natural, but it seems that we've learned from day one that uh, all those material things that gives people social status, and it does, it does give them social status, but we don't care. We don't have social status, so what do we need things? You know, if it's practical, okay, form follows function, right? If it has a function, then cool, let's have it. But uh, if it doesn't follow function, why have it? That goes back to sweatpants. That's why people with Asperger's syndrome may drive weird looking cars, but you know what? They're functional. They get you there and they get you there without falling apart. I'm not sure that's me. Seems like my cars are falling apart all the time. But um, the point is, we're just not into materialism. We're into reality. Number seven is we know the value and this is a big one. We know the value of a true friendship because, well, when you don't have something you tend to value or you understand the value of it. Now, say that you were out in the desert and you didn't have any water. I mean, that would be the most valuable thing to you at that moment, right? So if you are a person with autism, Asperger's syndrome, high functioning autism, uh, probably you don't have a lot of friends. You may have one or two close friends and you value them immensely because you know how rare a commodity they are. Now, people who are neurotypical, not all of them, but many of them, they just got more friends. They have more friends and they know what to do with. And if they lose a friend, eh, whatever, we got more where that one came from and we'll have more in the future. So friendships, uh, they're okay with them because they love that social interaction, but they got so many of them. You know, it's kind of like uh, it's kind of like the chicken farmer that has a thousand chickens. Okay, so the fox gets one of them, and eh, whatever. But if you have you know, like three or four chickens in a chicken coop in your backyard, the fox gets one of them. Uh, if you have three of them, when well, I got two, you lost a third of your chickens. I want my chicken back. Okay, so people aren't chickens. I, well, some of them are. But people aren't chickens. It's something much, much more than that. But the principle is we tend to value those things which we lose that we don't have much of number uh, eight i noticed that we're not agreeable just to agree i mean a lot of people agree with just about anything and again this goes back to social status social acceptance but they will agree to almost anything just to be accepted and this is proven psychologically i think it was called the ash experiment a s H E, uh, you can Google it sometime, but they had this thing where uh, students came into a room and they were instructed to look at these three lines on the, uh, I think it was like on a chalkboard or whatever, and when asked which one was the longest, choose the middle one, which by the way was not the longest. They were instructed to do that on purpose. Then the subject came in. That is the other student who wasn't aware of what was going on. And they wanted to see if he was influenced, this other student was influenced, by wrong answers. And what they discovered was, yeah, many times they would go along with the crowd. Even though it was very obvious the middle line was not the longest. Um, people with Asperger's syndrome, I'm not sure we are that influenced by the crowd because we're not part of the crowd. We think independently. We don't... Um, agree just to agree just because everyone else has been doing it or thinks that way that kind of goes back to style right but it uh, doesn't matter what it is could be a religious view could be a political view could be uh any world view that you can imagine just because everyone thinks that way do we have to think that way no we we may go along with them but then again we may not and if we know other people who are free thinkers who are not bound in their thought processes by what the community deems to be correct at that particular time and date, um, you know, that just encourages them all the more. Now, with that ash experiment, they took it a step further, and all the class agreed that the middle line was longest, even though it wasn't, except they had one guy who disagreed. Then they brought the subject in, and he heard this other guy disagree, then the subject was more likely to disagree with the crowd because just one person disagreed. You know what that means? That means that you, as an Aspie, because you are disagreeable in a positive sense, you have tremendous influence. That when everyone else is saying, uh, you know, they're saying up, when it's very clear to you that it's down. So you say it's down. You know, I'm just using that as an example. Or 
Everyone else says the middle line is the longest, and you know good and well the third line is the longest. And you say that. You have tremendous influence on the thinking of other people. That is something that is very powerful. That is why I think people with Asperger's syndrome, people who are, who are autistic, are very much needed in society, even though we're not a part of society, because we have a disproportionate influence on society due to the fact that uh, we're not agreeable, just to be agreeable. And sometimes being disagreeable is a good thing. Other times it's not. Number nine is we don't value superficial relationships. This is kind of the same thing as number seven. We value true friendship, but number nine is we don't value superficial relationships. In other words, if someone is in our life just to be in our life and has no particular meaning uh, or reason to be there, we don't mind those people, but it's not something that we put a lot of value in. They're just there, and, you know, that's the way we learn from day one. So little kids, you know, you go off to school, and you have all these people in your life, and none of them are close to you. So you don't really value them. It's not that you disvalue them, but uh, they're just not as important to you as that one or two close friends. So again, that takes us back to where we're not easily influenced. And somebody who is given to style has to be in fashion all the time. Chances are that's the person who's going to be misled by a weird political cult or religious cult. If that is the wind of the times, that is the way they will go. People with Asperger syndrome, now, nah, because, you know, that superficiality, not a part of who we are. Number 10 is, uh, well, you know, we seem to have a very low toleration level for, let's call these people idiots. Uh, you know, seriously, I'm trying to think of a better term. But people who just not thinking, uh, we don't have a whole lot of toleration for that. We probably should be a little bit more patient, but uh, it's hard when it's very, when the answer is very obvious, when something is so very clear, I mean, as clear as day, noon time, sun is shining, no shadows, no ambiguation, it's clear what it is, and some idiot says, no, it's not. We, we, at least that's been my experience, you tell me if you're any different, but toleration for that kind of ignorance, eh, I don't think so. All right, now, take a look at your screen. What you'll see are two rectangle boxes. What that means is we can keep on talking if you want. All you got to do is click one of those two rectangle boxes and we'll keep hanging out together. But if not, well then thanks for stopping by and see you all next time.